Hey guys, this is Janine from Pangolin and today I'm here to give you a real live review of the 60 to 600 Sigma Sport. It has a 10 times optical zoom and I had the luck to test this lens when it just came out. It was around November 2018 and I really really loved the versatility back then. Bought myself the lens and have been shooting it for about a year now. So Today I want to share all my insights with you and let's get started. Before I forget guys, please don't forget to subscribe. If you like these videos, press the bell button down below and write me a message. If you have any more questions, I'm happy to come back to you as soon as possible. So the 60 to 600 millimeter of Sigma is an absolute super zoom. And back then when I chose to buy this lens, it was because of its incredible versatility it brings along. I have never heard of a 10 times optical zoom going all the way to 600 millimeter. And there was no brand in turn lens that could give me that reach on a zoom lens, especially when you consider bird life, you, you just sometimes need that extra bit of reach. So I want to talk you through a few of the specs and the build of the camera. It goes from f4.5 to an f6.3. So you need to consider that your f-stop changes as you zoom in and you're losing light. But the nice thing is as you zoom back, your f-stop will always jump back to the lowest that you have chosen. So if you started off on f4.5 and you pull back to 60 again, it will open up and um, give you more light again, which is nice. It can go up to f32, but I don't think you would often shoot on it because most people would utilize this lens for sports or wildlife photography, like in my case, to get that extra reach and we often shoot on lower f-stops. So later on, I would like to test with you how this lens performs when it's wide open. At 2.7 kg, this lens is really not a lightweight, but you must consider that you cover a range from 60 to 600. That's a real super zoom. So you can't expect that to come at no weight at all. We add about another 100 millimeters when we zoom out, plus our lens hood gives us about 8.5 centimeters. I like to keep it on as much as possible also to protect my lens. That gives it a considerable size. But nevertheless, if I handhold it, with my little spaghetti arms, I really have no problems. I can even shoot over somebody if I need to. And the reason I bought this is because it gives me that versatility of being able not just to zoom in and out, but to handhold and move around with it fairly easy. If you have to wait for a bird in flight, such as these pike kingfishers over there for a longer time, a monopod or a mount might help you. But in general, it is quite easy to handhold. The sports range of Sigma has made sure that it is dust and weatherproof. The front and the back element are both dust and splash resistant, which is really nice. I've really not had any problems working it in the weather. And on top of that, the front element also got a coating that the ghosting and the sun flare coming in doesn't affect the lens so badly. The material it's built out of makes sure that doesn't struggle so much with thermal changes if you shoot in the very cold or I happen to shoot a lot in very hot weather here in Africa it doesn't give me any problems whatsoever it comes really nicely with an awesome lens ring that has a Arcasus mount built into it and in comparison to its older cousin the 150 to 600 millimeter sport that is a massive improvement and it feels extremely smooth if we look at the zoom, they are built very sturdily. The zoom is almost a bit tight. So you can't simply use it with your fingers. You really have to use your entire hand, your entire wrist to move the zoom along. And there's no way to adjust the tightness on this lens. However, alternatively, you can grab the lens and push and pull it, which is almost a bit easier in my eyes, but it doesn't come quite natural to me. I'm I'm a creature of habit. I'm very used to zooming my lenses by, by twisting them. It came with two lens caps, the normal flat plastic one and a nice big soft 
fabric one that I actually prefer much over the regular ones because I can put it on much easier when my actual lens hood is on as well just to protect it from dust and, and splashes maybe and I don't tend to lose it so easily um, you know lens caps just go flying about and this seems to stick with me much longer so overall this lens has an extremely robust feel even though it is a little bit tight in the zoom I feel like I can take it out in the field bump it about a bit I can travel with it in the weather in the hot African Sun in the cold and I don't feel it's gonna break under my fingers I really like that so you can see with the build in our Swiss plate we can simply mount it anywhere we want to without having to carry another plate with us it can't come loose the plate can't twist loose it it really is very very handy and it saves you a bit of money on top of that if we look at the lens we have the typical autofocus and manual focus modes but Sigma is also known for its manual override mode what that means is that you autofocus but you can fine adjust it and manually override your autofocus by twisting the manual focus how much you need to rotate the manual focus in order to override depends on your custom settings I think factory settings show that you only have to fine adjust it minimally in order to override your autofocus so if you're actually hand holding your lens straight on the lens you could be prone of touching the focus ring by accident and overriding your focus be careful with that if you hold it by your mount or if you have got the camera mounted all together it shouldn't be a problem at all quite frankly I'm shooting on back button focus so I can find adjust my manual focus at any given time and I don't feel like the manual override is required for me therefore then obviously we have our focus range I think you're pretty pretty accustomed with that I found that I can focus quite clearly at about 2.2 meters when I'm on full 600 millimeters if I pull back I can focus as close as 25 centimeters which is pretty neat previously I shot my 100 to 400 millimeter lens and I loved how close I could focus with it when I was fully zoomed I think I could focus under 60 centimeters with my 100 to 400 on 400 I tested this lens on 400 millimeters I need to be about 75 75 centimeters away from my subject then we have our optical stabilization that's what Sigma calls your image stabilization um, we can turn it off but on a 600 millimeter lens you really really require that um, one and obviously two is there for any panning shots so you can pull with on one axis whether you decide to do it horizontally or whether you turn your camera you hear the nice clicks I really enjoy that you always know when you're fully 90 degrees turned or whether you turn your camera and want to pull with vertically it will stabilize it on either axis which is nice the optical stabilization goes up to four stops which is pretty great um, also required with such a long and heavy lens especially if you're hand holding it a lot and I'm going to test it with you later when we test our focus system last but not least we have our custom settings on the Sigma lens as I said you can customize your lens when you put it onto the USB Sigma dock um, with the app you can customize the focus speed you can customize your manual override and you can customize for different scenarios down here which could be nice last but not least we have our zoom lock here um, so that our lens doesn't gravitate down or zoom out when we carry it or travel the nice thing is you can lock it both at 60 and 600 so I hardly ever do that it's tucked away nicely in my camera bag so I don't feel the need but it could be a safety feature that was the handling of this lens but I think you're all really keen to know how it performs so let's get into the focusing in the image quality 
to get you a good idea what this lens can do. We're back from the river and I quickly downloaded the files so that we can get right into how that image quality looks like shot on the 6600. If you enjoyed the outing this morning, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have plenty more videos to come or check out our homepage to come and visit us on Safari. So the first thing I want to check out with you guys is our focusing speed and how well that optical stabilization is working. Rule of thumb is that you want to shoot minimum your focal length. So on a 600 millimeter lens, that would be 640th of a second at minimum. My personal rule of thumb is to actually double that because with those long tailor zoom lenses being out on a moving boat or on a safari with moving subjects, I feel that your focal length is often not enough. However, Sigma says it has a four stop optical stabilization. Obviously, if our subject is moving, that's not going to help, but it should help with our internal camera shake, saying that we can stop four light stops down. So I gave it a try, a shot on 640th of a second. By experience, it's not enough. And I'm going to have a look at the buffaloes that we shot this morning, and you can see it is not as crisp as I would like. That's now a two on one zoom. Let's check it out on a one on one zoom. Yeah, not bad. We can see quite a lot of details, but not as sharp as I wanted on the eye. And I was focused on the eye. If we check out double our focal length, however, we see immediate more crispness turning up. Our ISO went up, obviously. Despite the additional grain, I feel that this is definitely the sharp picture. So a zoom lens of that magnitude, we need to shoot fast. And given that we shoot it on 6.3 with the 600 millimeter zoom, we need to shoot it in good light conditions. It's not a lens you can shoot indoors or in really bad light conditions. We just can't open it enough and we need too much speed to get the sharp shot. However, the focusing speed is really nice. I was shooting the data earlier and this egret just flew past and it picked it up just like that out of the air. You can see the background is rather busy. And yes, the bird is wide, big contrast, but I had no problem picking it up. Similar to these lines that I shot earlier in the year, you can see I was focusing between the grasses and I had no issue of focusing on the line regardless. So the focusing speed is really, really good. The dart I was talking about eventually flew. We got a little bit too close to him. And the first two shots are slightly out of focus, but right then and there, it picked it up. It went straight in and most of these shots are sharp. It lost it, I think, for two or three shots in between, but it also picked it up again. So I'm really, really happy with how this lens tracks and focuses on moving subjects. If I now look into these shots though, if I shot it on 3200 of a second, lowest f-stop, because I really like the blurry backgrounds. If I zoom in, it, once again, it's not entirely crisp, not as crisp as I was hoping. Um, if I go on a two in one zoom, I wouldn't have been focused on the head. It's unlikely with that skinny neck that I would have managed that, but I would have at least expected that wing to be a little bit more sharp. This is shot on 310 millimeters. So the focusing speed is just fine. The clarity at the end is good, but maybe not as good as what you would know from a prime lens, for instance. Moving on, I want to discuss our image quality when our lens is wide open, a little bit more details. We were sitting at these pied kingfishers, I believe you heard them earlier, and they're fairly small birds, so shooting them on 600 millimeter makes sense. I want that nice, smooth beige background. I shot it sufficiently fast enough to get a sharp shot as wide open as I can on 600 mil. And let's zoom in. On a two in one zoom, which is quite extreme, we still get really nice contrast here. These images haven't been edited. They're straight out of the camera like that. So you can really enhance them quite a bit more. But there's a bit of softness around the head that I don't like for a still subject. 
So if we move along, all shot on 6.3, that softness prevails. It is not as crisp as I would like, neither down here at the feathers nor in the head. And I would say if you go on a one-on-one, -on -one, this is a really sharp image. This is now pixel peeping. This is now being extremely critical and I'd be plenty happy with that. But the difference to F8 is quite considerable. So as soon as we go to F8, there's that extra bit of clarity that comes in on a 600mm that makes this lens really, really beautiful. However, we often want to shoot on our widest aperture because we're shooting such fast shutter speeds and because we want that nice bouquet, that nice blurry background, the 6.3 is crucial for a wildlife photographer. So moving on, this was not just a lucky shot. As I continue, my F8 shots are continuously sharper and more clear than on 6.3. If we look at the same thing on a rough 400 millimeter, we're going to check same settings at two thousandths of a second. On one on one, it looks very good. We didn't get any closer. Yeah, if I zoom in, we get that slight softness. Same for the next shot. So it's, it's not just a focusing thing of me or I was moving. I was actually mounted. My camera was steady, so I wasn't hand holding these shots. As soon as I go to F8, we get that extra little bit of clarity. And if we do a side by side comparison here, we have that shadow on here, but if we judge it by the crest on the top and by the eye, I definitely say we have a tad more clarity on F8, even if we zoom back to 400 millimeters. Overall though, the contrast for a raw image is really, really good. The colors are nice, it's clear, it's sharp, and there's nothing to complain about. From past experience, you therefore have to shoot fairly fast on that lens. I rarely dare to shoot lower than 1600 to be honest. And on top of that, I tend to burst shoot a lot in order to get that safety image to make sure that within a sequence of photograph you get that one that is actually pin sharp. With all this said, you must also consider where your focus point was positioned in this. Because with wildlife photography, we often shoot on AI server, continuous focusing, and therefore we have to shift the focus point within our frame in order to compose a photograph. So if I would like this Pied Kingfisher to sit down here on the bottom right, I would not be able to focus in the middle as long as I'm moving a little bit on the boat. Now, if we go all the way back to 60 millimeters, I wasn't shooting the Pied Kingfishers because quite frankly, we wouldn't have seen much of it anymore. So I was concentrating a bit more on the riverfront here. Um, we have those beautiful jackalberry trees all along the river. And on 60 millimeter, 1600 of a shutter should be plenty sufficient. And if I zoom in now, and you can see as we go to the corners, we get that purple fringing, that chromatic aeration that appears especially in the high contrast areas. And it happens so more in the corners of the image. If we go more towards the center, I don't see this happening. However, you must understand that a lot of this can be corrected in Lightroom afterwards. And I'm going to show you the image just now. So as you can see, if I remove the chromatic aberration in this image in Lightroom, it is a really easy fix. So I don't feel this is something that we need to worry about too much. If we now start closing our lens towards 7.1, it gets quite a bit sharper. But if I look into the corners, those branches still have that purple fringing. And I went all the way to F9 and I have a feeling it gets slightly less, but we're not getting rid of the chromatic aberration all entirely. However, do you really zoom in that much on a landscape shot? I'm not sure. If we have a look now 
add a portrait in comparison. This is now shot at 85 mil as soon as you zoom a little bit more in. So still under 100 millimeters and we go into high contrast areas. This person here sits right on the corner of the frame. And yes, there's slight green fringing here around his shirt, but it's absolutely minor. And for the fact that I can zoom back so far to shoot a portrait up close, or even a landscape shot in between, I find that pretty incredible. So all in all together, I find the image quality still sufficient on 60 mil, even though if I would now go out on a portrait shoot only, a 16600 would maybe not be the lens I would choose. Moving on to vignetting, another distortion that we often worry about in lenses, you can see at an f4.5 on 60 millimeter, we get quite a little bit of vignetting around the image. As we close down our aperture, that vignetting is nearly gone by f8 and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Regardless whether we shoot wide open or not, it is something that is once again very easy to fix in Lightroom and retrospective. So what do I think of the overall image quality in our 60 to 600 Sigma Sport? These images are now all edited, the sharpness is put in that we need to for a raw image and I would say I love the contrast of this lens. I love the overall performance. I can't say that any of this is bad. We get clear outlines, we get nice sharp pictures, we get lovely details. And if we shoot on a fast shutter speed with a slightly closed aperture, we can really get amazing performances out of this lens with those beautifully spread wings, the detail with the bug in the beak. However, we need to consider that we can't always shoot with a slightly closed aperture. It is all about light and an F8 is requiring quite bright light conditions. So overall, I really like the quality that this lens is providing. It has a phenomenally fast focused, but if we look into a little bit more detail, I can recognize a little bit of softness all the way through the focal range up to 600 millimeter. And I would say mostly we're gonna be shooting between 400, 500 and 600 millimeters because that is what we got this lens for, that extra bit of focal range that it is providing us. However, what do you want to use it for? You can see the water splashes, you can see the detail of the little white feathers on the gull. So how much detail do you want? And then we need to go into the next point. How much do you want to pay for it? For what it is worth, this lens is really providing an outstanding quality. Even in low light conditions, I was surprised how well the focusing is picking up on the subject, shooting into the sun, having very, very little light to play with. The lens generally performs really, really well. This was shot way before sunrise and you can see it on a very slow shutter speed, extremely high ISO. So if we're gonna zoom in, yes, we're gonna lose a bit of detail, but a 600 millimeter lens on a 320th of a second with over 12,000 ISO, I think this is quite an amazing performance. So overall, the versatility of this lens paired with the good quality of the images throughout nearly the entire focal range is an absolute winner. I can pull back in order to get the whole elephant or I can zoom right in to get its eyelashes right there. I can take a quick landscape shot because the clouds are beautiful and you can see this is shot under 150 mil. So we, we can pull back further than with the bigger cousin, the 150 to 600 millimeter. It's a lens I love to take in the Masai Mara for hot air ballooning because I can pull back for these wider shots but at the same time, I can get right in there as if I have a 600 mil to get the detail on the lines below us. Same with the helicopter rides for aerial photography. You can 
zoom in as much as you need depending on the height and I can still take a shot of my pilot that sits less than a meter in front of me and even though 16 mil might show some chromatic aberration I find the detail of this shot perfectly fine. I even use this lens quite a bit for portrait photography. I like the shallow depth of field. It provides a really nice bouquet and I have the chance to get closer to my subjects, include a bit of the landscape around them or really pull back. Well, if you sit with a prime lens, you might miss a shot like that because as a lap wing is attacking, you just can't pull back that extra little bit to give it enough space. So on Safari, it is extremely valuable to have that wide range of focal length. Otherwise, you would have to carry with three or four lenses to cover the same range. If you come with a 600 millimeter prime, which will give you that extra bit of clarity and which will get you an even nicer bouquet, no question about that. You will have to carry a telezoom nevertheless for these type of images. So let's talk about whether this lens is good value for money. It is currently on the market for about 1750 US dollars. If we compare that to the super zoom range that's out there, that would make it about 100 US dollars more expensive than the 150 to 600. But I totally think that these hundred dollars are worth it because you get that extra range, even though it might not be quite as sharp on 60 and it has a bit of fringing, you have it, you can pull back, you have that extra beautiful mound, you have all the pros of the 150 to 600 plus more. It is about 450 US dollars cheaper than the 100 to 400 of Canon. And I have been shooting that lens for a very long time and I feel that the 100 to 400 provides some more clarity in the images, but it's lacking 200 millimeter focal length there that you would have to crop in and then eventually lose the image quality once again if, if you're just too far away. And it is about 350 US dollars more expensive than the 200, 500 of Nikon that it compares to. So yes, it is amazing value for money for what you're getting, that you can carry only one lens and cover a range from almost landscape and portraiture all the way to close-up zooms of wildlife, birds and animals. It has an amazing focusing speed. It has great image quality. The contrast is beautiful. Even though it might not provide you with the amazing bouquet, and the clarity that you would get with the f4 prime lens but you must consider the 500 millimeter prime of sigma is nearly six thousand us dollars expensive that is a hell of a lot of money that you pay extra just to gain that little bit of extra clarity so how big do you print your shots how much do you do with them at the end? Do they sit on your computer most of the time or do you actually print books, print them big or blow them up in banners? If not, I think this lens provides you with a perfectly good all-rounder opportunity for both sport and wildlife. If you want to go with prime lenses from Canon or Nikon, you quickly hit the $10,000 range and higher. So for a 600 millimeter prime of Canon, the newest one, you pay nearly 13,000 US dollars. So if you get this lens for a good deal out there, that would be 10 times more. So is this lens 10 times worse? No, by no means at all, it isn't. It is a really nice lens to have. And if I was an avid wildlife photographer that travels a lot and therefore has traveling restrictions as to weight, I would really look into this lens. I really hope this helped you. If you have any further questions or ideas, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can. You can also download some of the JPEGs and some of the raw files on our homepage if you want to check out the quality in more detail. Let me know if you're going to buy this lens and I wish you a wonderful day. Bye bye.